Dwayne Wade is a good catch. Smart, successful man. Mm -hmm. um, have you always chosen so perfectly? <laughs> how have they been in the past? <laughs> Unemployed. Oh. Um, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Gabrielle Union has settled comfortably into her life as a working mom and as the wife of former NBA player Dwayne Wade. She frequently shares cute videos of their blended family on social media, and many people consider the couple to be the epitome of relationship goals. However, her dating history has been rocky and full of questionable patterns and red flags that she continues to ignore. You know this is about to be some mess, so be sure to scoop up something to munch on at rrgsnacks.com, our online concession stand that has an assortment of turkey, beef and bacon jerky, buffalo wing popcorn, and gummy sour bears. To get a clear picture of Gabrielle's messy dating history, we have to take you way back to her junior year of high school. It was during this time that she caught the attention of a sophomore basketball player. We know him today as Hall of Famer, NBA champ, and head coach of the Dallas Mavericks, Jason Kidd. In her memoir titled, We're Going to Need More Wine, Gabrielle admits that many black guys weren't interested in her early years due to colorism. So she felt a rush whenever a guy that was lighter than her showed her some interest. When Jason gave her the eye at one of his basketball games, Gabrielle felt a sense of excitement. Even though he had a girlfriend and she had a boyfriend, they exchanged numbers and after chatting over the weekend, they decided to dump their respective partners and become an item. As her junior prom approached, Jason agreed to be her date. Two weeks before the event and after conducting a post-game interview, he dumped her right there in the gymnasium in front of his teammates and her dad. He had already moved on with someone else. Jason went on to get drafted into the NBA, and Gabrielle adopted his dating method by always ensuring she had a plan B, C, and D waiting in the wings. In her memoir, she explains how her 20s and 30s were a time of exploration. She loved having a variety of men in her life, and she thought that monogamy was for suckers. Intimacy was something that she wanted to enjoy repeatedly with multiple partners. After a friend called her out on being color-struck and what had turned into her refusal to date anyone that was darker than her, things changed for Gabrielle. She opened herself up to men of every complexion, including in 1999 when she started dating Jacksonville Jaguars running back Chris Howard. After six months, Chris decided to seal the deal. Gabrielle flew to Jacksonville to spend some time with him and to celebrate her 27th birthday. She spent the day at the spa, and when she returned to his home, rose petals were on the ground. She followed the trail of petals until she reached Chris, who was on his knee with a potato wedge in one hand and a ring in the other, and a bucket of KFC lying next to him. Looking back at the situation, she now sees all the red flags, but at the time, she gladly accepted his proposal. She called all of her friends, family members, her agents, and reps to tell them the good news. The following day, she took a quick trip to Wilmington, North Carolina to audition for Dawson's Creek. She flew back to Jacksonville that same day and let herself into Chris's house. She hopped on his computer to check her email, and that's when she saw some messages that confirmed Chris was planning to fly in another woman. When Chris returned home, he admitted he had invited another woman into town ahead of Gabrielle's arrival, just in case she turned down his proposal. So 24 hours after getting engaged, Gabrielle faced a tough decision. She ultimately decided to stay with Chris because she has an intense fear of public humiliation, and she didn't want to deal with the backlash from her friends, family, and the media. Chris got cut from the Jaguars in 2000, and her friends encouraged her to dump him. However, in her memoir, Gabrielle said she didn't want to kick him while he was down. By the time they got married on May 5, 2001, a wedding which Gabrielle paid for on her own, Chris was training with the Raiders, but they eventually cut him as well. Gabrielle said that from that point on, Chris never got another job, and she was forced to be the breadwinner. She also supported all of his failed business ventures, all while he was constantly cheating on her. Gabrielle wasn't too upset about him hooking up with other women. 
Since he was unfaithful, she felt she had the right to get it on with other people as well. But things came to a head in 2005 when it was announced that Gabrielle had landed the role of Alice Cramden in the film The Honeymooners. One of the women Chris was cheating with decided it was time to cash in on Gabrielle's success. The woman contacted several media outlets to sell her story along with proof that Chris was a big-time cheater. Thankfully, Gabrielle had solid connections in the industry, and an employee at a news outlet contacted her to let her know what the woman was trying to do. Gabrielle immediately hired Hollywood lawyer Marty Singer, who's known as the man who can make any problem disappear. According to Gabrielle, they set up a sting operation to have someone meet with the woman to see what kind of information she had on Chris. However, the woman never showed up. She simply disappeared. In her memoir, Gabrielle said she wasn't even upset about the cheating. She was more upset that she had to pay a bunch of lawyers' fees to fix Chris's mess. They announced their separation in November 2005. In a statement, her publicist said, The couple remains close and asks that you respect their privacy at this difficult time. Within hours, her publicist's phone was ringing off the hook from eligible bachelors in the industry that wanted a piece of Gabrielle. Their divorce was finalized in 2006, and since they didn't have a prenup and Chris was reliant on Gabrielle's income during their marriage, she had to break him off a hefty check to bring their marriage to an end. She moved on and allegedly had some sort of interaction with basketball player Vince Carter. At the time, Vince was playing for the New Jersey Nets, and guess who was one of his teammates? Jason Kidd. But grab some more popcorn because that's not even the messy part of the story. We couldn't find any photographic evidence of Gabrielle and Vince's romance, but their alleged fling took place sometime around 2006. Now, we ain't ones to gossip, but in 2006, Vince was still legally married to his wife of two years, Ellen Sellers. It was actor and comedian Faison Love who poured all of Gabrielle and Vince's tea during an interview with Kwame Brown's Bust Life. Faison described how, during a night out at a club, he ran into Gabrielle and Vince, and they were all drinking and having a good time. And then, according to Faison, he and Gabrielle engaged in a hot and steamy makeout session. Faison stated that anyone who didn't believe him could just ask Vince for confirmation. Faison added, Ask him about that night. Everybody know about the infamous Faison Gabby tongue down. It appears that someone went into overdrive to scrub Vince and Gabby's alleged fling from the internet because this next piece of information is a bit difficult for us to confirm. RRG uncovered a January 2007 message board post on a basketball forum. In the post, an anonymous user linked to a Metro News report that hints at Gabrielle potentially being the reason Vince got divorced in the summer of 2006. Whether the information was factual or not, whatever was going on between them fizzled out, and she moved on with Darren Sharper of the Minnesota Vikings. Now, at the time, Darren was considered a hot commodity and a definite upgrade from Gabrielle's ex-husband, but looks can definitely be deceiving. During the summer of 2006, she and Darren hit up several red carpet events, and they looked like the perfect match. We couldn't find any interviews with Gabrielle talking about their romance, but it's believed that they were on again, off again. In January 2007, she was spotted, quote, flirting and dirty dancing with Derek Jeter at a Bahamas nightclub. Her rep insisted they were just friends. Weeks later, she met Dwayne Wade at a Super Bowl party. In an interview, she said she wasn't interested because she was truly, madly, deeply in love with someone else. Was that someone else, Darren, or another guy? We're not sure. Darren went on to date several other women in the industry, and 10 years after his relationship with Gabrielle ended, he was sentenced to 18 years behind bars for drugging and taking advantage of approximately 16 women in California, Nevada, Louisiana, and Arizona. Now, back to Gabrielle and Duane. Not only was she involved with someone else when they first met, but she wasn't interested in dating another athlete. 
especially one that was as young as Duane, who was only 25 while Gabrielle was 34. Duane was also married to his high school sweetheart, Savon, at the time, and they shared two children together. So Gabrielle and Duane decided to be friends. Then, after what she described as a heart-crushing breakup with yet another immature jerk, she decided to give Duane a chance. And this is where things get a little murky. Duane filed for divorce from Savon in 2007, the same year he met Gabrielle. However, he insists Gabrielle wasn't the reason his marriage went sour. He and Gabrielle made their public debut in 2010, the same year his divorce was finalized, and they had to endure constant media scrutiny, lawsuits, and an unconfirmed allegation that Duane gave his ex-wife an STD. In May 2010, Savon filed a case claiming Duane's relationship with Gabrielle was causing her and their children emotional distress. The lawsuit was eventually tossed out. Duane was awarded sole custody of his two children in early 2011, and he adopted his nephew, Davion Morris, that same year. When, I, when the children came to Chicago, he said, I'm having somebody pick up the children during your parenting time for eight or nine hours because I want them to play basketball. What if it's something I have planned and I want to take them somewhere? Please, I'm entitled to this. The parenting coordinator, Howard Rosenberg, he told me, Miss Wade, if you do not allow Zaire to go to that basketball game, I'm going to go ask the judge that you never see your children again. And I'll send you the email. He and Savon eventually reached a divorce settlement and he was ordered to pay her $5 million. But the drama was far from over. In November 2011, an anonymous woman told Bossup website that Duane, quote, cheats on Gabrielle all the time. The woman added, I too had my situation with Duane. Can't lie, he is great in bed, but I definitely would not take him seriously the way Gabrielle does. Two years after that drop of tea, Duane fathered a child by his longtime friend, Aja Matoyer. Aja also has two older children with actor Damon Wayans Jr. Duane and Gabrielle claimed they were broken up when the child was conceived, but TMZ uncovered some of Gabrielle's social media posts that were shared during the time of the alleged breakup that proved they were still very much together. In her memoir, Gabrielle admits they weren't in a good place when Duane fathered a child with someone else. And since she was having fertility issues and unable to carry a baby to term during their relationship, it hurt 10 times worse to find out how easily he got someone else pregnant. She and Duane worked on things behind the scenes and she struggled to forgive him. In her memoir, she wrote that a small voice kept telling her to leave, but her fear of public humiliation was so great that she couldn't even take her own advice. So she sucked it up and stayed with him. Aja gave birth to their son Xavier in November 2013, and less than a month later, Duane proposed to Gabrielle with an eight and a half carat diamond engagement ring. His children helped him by holding signs that read, will you marry us? And Gabrielle said yes. The biggest difference between this and the last marriage mm -hmm. uh, will be a prenup. Um, <laughs> at, at my insistence. Oh! At my insistence. When you have your own stuff, you don't need to worry about anybody else's stuff. Right. So everyone should go into the relationship knowing I'm here for you and you're here for me. And the reality is I've never seen Dwayne balance a checkbook. So... Yeah, that's hilarious. <laughs> I gotta protect my stuff. Yes. You know what I mean? So. After signing a prenup, they became husband and wife in April 2014. After suffering an estimated nine miscarriages, they decided to have a child via surrogacy, and their daughter, Kavya, was born in November 2018. These days, Gabrielle and Duane appear to be as happy as ever. Duane also has a bond with his son, Xavier, although he chooses to keep their relationship off of social media. Aja's affiliation with Duane landed her a spot on the reality show, Basketball Wives. She also told Bossup website she and Duane had a great co-parenting relationship for the sake of their son. However, she declined to comment on how she gets along with Gabrielle. Looking back on her decision to give Duane a second chance, Gabrielle is still torn about how things played out. In her second memoir, she wrote, The me of today would not have stayed with him. But would I be who I am now without that pain? Let us know if you're shocked by Gabrielle Union's dating history. And thanks for watching RRG. Uh -huh.